Zane versus Cyrus. The inevitable duel between brothers. Cyrus wants to get his old brother back, the one that respected his opponents. Zane, on the other hand, is happy being whatever he needs to be as long as he achieves that sweet, sweet victory. That's not all though. Cyrus wants to prove in this duel how much further he has come from all the way back in the day where he played that power bond card in such a terrible way that Zane had to pay off the opponent to not tell anyone on how trash his brother is at Yu-Gi-Oh. Cause I'm gonna be the one who takes you down. Stop. <laughs> Zane? This duel never happened, got it? Just take this and walk away. Nice card. You got yourself a deal. Spoilers, Cyrus loses this duel anyway, but I mean, that was kind of obvious since he plays a Roid deck. No offense to the Roids, of course, but they're just not good. They're not a good archetype. If Cyrus really wanted to beat Zane, he should have just completely threw away these cards and made a brand new deck, but uh, we're stuck with them. And he, he mashes them all together with the Cyber Darks and the Cyber Dragons at the end of the series to create an ultimate deck. I just can't believe he does that. I just can't believe it. Why? Anyway, I was wondering if Cyrus played a little bit different in this duel, could the outcome have changed? Or perhaps did Zane miss some earlier opportunities for victory? We won't know unless we jump into the duel. Before the duel begins, Jaden slips Power Bond into Cyrus's deck, while both Cyrus and Zane slip into some electric shock colors. Now, for the rest of this duel, when a player takes life point damage, they take the equivalent damage in the real world. And so, with that, the duel begins and Zane goes first. He draws, and his opening hand consists of Infernal Dragon, Exploder Dragon, Cyberdark Horn, Cyberdark Keel, Quick Summon, and Power Wall. Zane starts by summoning his Infernal Dragon to the field into defense. He then sets his Power Wall trap face down and ends his turn. Why did Zane summon a 2,000 attack point monster into defense? Keep in mind, it's got zero defense. Why would he do that? Well, it's because he wants it to be destroyed, since the core of his deck revolves all around his Cyberdark monsters, whom all have the effect to equip a level 4 or lower Dragon-type monster from either player's graveyard to themselves to increase their attack by that monster's attack, which is significantly better than the real-world version. The anime ones, they're quite strong, to be honest with you. So Zane believes it's in his best interest to sacrifice this monster for later plays. However, whichever way you look at it, I'm going to call this a misplay. Because one, he could have set his Exploder Dragon face down instead, because when it is destroyed, it would destroy whatever card attacked it. Meaning Zane can start attacking directly even earlier in the duel. Or, more simply, just summon this monster into attack. It's 2,000 attack. Fun fact, Cyrus will not be able to deal with this monster for several turns, because he's just going to draw not that great stuff. So if he would just put a 2,000 attack for monster on the field, he would have just kept summoning monsters, kept attacking into Cyrus. Snowball effect, probably would have won. I'm going to give you a misplay, Zane. It works out in the end, but I think you overthought this. It's Cyrus's turn, and he draws. His opening hand consists of Trucroid, two copies of Psychroid, Emergency Provisions, Cyber Repairer, and Life Force. Cyrus starts by summoning his Trucroid to the field into attack. He enters his battle phase and attacks and destroys Infernal Dragon. Now, since Trucroid destroyed a monster by battle and sent it to the grave, its effect now equips the destroyed monster onto itself increasing its own attack by the same amount as the equipped monster. And while now having a 3000 attack point monster seems like a great thing to have, the real benefit of this play is denying Zane Truesdale a dragon type monster in the grave. Good thinking Cyrus. And so, thinking he has the upper hand, Cyrus ends his turn by setting Life Force face down. It's back to Zane, and he draws the fusion. He summons his Exploder Dragon to the field into attack. He enters his battle phase and crashes it into his Trucroid. Everyone is confused by this move. Using a 1000 attack point monster to attack into a 3000 attack point monster that's just going to absorb the monster and get even stronger? Seems crazy, right? That is unless you consider Exploder Dragon's special effect. You see, when this monster is destroyed and sent to the grave, this card destroyed whatever monster destroyed it. And not only that, but all battles involving this monster have the damage reduced to zero. With all the pieces in place, still in the battle phase, I might add, Zane activates his quick play spell, Quick Summon, 
which lets him immediately perform a normal summon. He summons his Cyberdark Horn to the field. Due to its effect when normal summoned, it equips a level 4 or lower Dragon Monster in either player's graveyard to itself. It then gains attack equal to that monster's. Zane equips his Infernal Dragon, which increases its attack to 2,800. Zane attempts to attack directly to deal a hefty amount of damage. However, Cyrus activates his set Continuous Trap, Life Force. Now, for as long as this card remains face upon the field, if Cyrus would take battle damage, he can instead pay 400 life points to nullify the damage. And so, Horn's attack continues, Life Force Sword's effect activates, and the damage is reduced down to 400. Zane ends his turn. I'm going to give Cyrus a little bit of props here. Life Force is actually quite a good card to go against Zane. Zane, Cyber Dragon, Cyber Dark Dragon decks, known for these massive, huge monsters. Having a card that just stays on the field at like no cost whatsoever, just reducing all your opponent's damage down to 400. It's a, it's a good card to use against Zane, and it's a card that he bought specifically to fight against Zane. So, fair play to him. It's Cyrus's turn, and he draws Submarine Roid. He summons it to the field and immediately enters his battle phase. Due to the effect of Submarine Roid, it can attack directly. And so, Cyrus attacks Zane directly. But that's not all. Since Submarine Roid dealt direct battle damage, it can now switch itself into defense. Cyrus ends his turn by setting Cyber Repairer face down. It's Zane's turn, and he draws Cyber Dark Edge. He summons it to the field, and as he does, he activates its effect to equip his Exploder Dragon in the grave to itself to increase its attack. Zane moves into his battle phase and attacks Submarine Roid with Cyber Dark Horn. Before the attack connects, Cyrus activates his set Cyber Repairer. This card's effect prevents all machine type monsters Cyrus controls from being destroyed by battle until the end of the turn. The cost to play this card, however, is that Zane can draw a card. Zane draws and gets Rebirth Judgment. The attack continues regardless. Cyber Dark Horn attacks Submarine Roid. While it's not destroyed thanks to Cyber Repairer, the second effect of Cyber Dark Horn activates which allows it to deal piercing battle damage. The effect of Life Force Sword, however, reduces that damage down to 400. However, Cyber Dark Horn isn't the only one with a unique effect. All of the Cyber Dark monsters have one unique effect, and for this monster, now attacking with Cyber Dark Edge, he uses its unique ability. By cutting its damage in half, it can attack directly. Cyrus again uses Life Force Sword to reduce this damage to 400. Zane ends his turn by setting his Rebirth Judgment Trap face down. It's back to Cyrus, and he draws Pot of Greed. He activates it immediately to draw two new cards. He gets Training Wheels and Mirror Damage. Cyrus summons one of his Psychroids in his hand to the field. He then equips it with the Training Wheels Equip spell. This card's effect is that it can only be equipped to a Psychroid. Now the monster it is equipped to can attack your opponent directly. If the equipped monster inflicts battle damage to your opponent by a direct attack, remove from play this card and the equipped monster into your next standby phase. This can apply to quite a few cards in a lot of people's decks, but Training Wheels is way too specific. Needing a Psychroid to equip this to, and Psychroid isn't even that good, it's just a normal monster. I would rather play like anything other than this card. I don't rate this card. I wish he played like anything else. Could have been better. Anyway, Cyrus switches his Submarine Roid into attack and enters his battle phase. First, he attacks directly with Submarine Roid thanks to its own effect. It then switches itself back into defense after the battle. Psychroid then attacks directly next thanks to Training Wheels. Since Psychroid inflicted direct damage, both this card and Psychroid are banished until Cyrus's next standby phase. Cyrus ends his turn by setting Mirror Damage face down. It's Zane's turn, and he too draws Pot of Greed. He activates it to draw two new cards. He gets Instant Fusion and Fusion Guard. Zane normal summons his final Cyber Dark monster, Cyber Dark Keel. However, since there are no Dragon type monsters in either player's graveyard, there is nothing for it to equip to itself and so its attack remains at its base level. Now, it's worth me bringing up now that since the very first turn of this duel, Zane has had Power Walls set face down. He's had a few opportunities where he could have activated this card. Say when he's taking like a thousand damage or 800 damage, he could have been activating this, sending the top eight cards of his deck to the grave to reduce the damage down to zero, but more importantly, making it 
likely that a dragon type monster goes to the grave for him to use his keel with and equip to and stuff. Personally, I don't think it's a misplay because he's saving that power wall for a really big attack. And if you're going to mill cards from the top of your deck, there's always a chance you lose your combo pieces. I don't think Zane wants that to happen. So I'm okay with him waiting a little while and just playing a little bit cautiously until the time comes. But my only argument against that is because when he does use it, he goes way over the top with it and uses it way too much and puts himself in such a unnecessarily risky situation. We'll talk about that when we get to it, but for now, Zane enters his battle phase. He attacks and destroys Submarine Roid with Cyberdark Horn. Piercing battle damage is dealt, but Cyrus reduces it to 400 with Life Force. Cyberdark Edge and Cyberdark Keel then both attack directly. Both of the attacks are successful, but Cyrus reduces their damage down to 400 each. Zane ends his turn by setting Fusion Guard face down. And it's right here where Zane could have won the duel. Why didn't he? How could he have done it? I'll tell you right now. With Instant Fusion and Defusion both in Zane's hand, which the animators actually go out of their way to show as well, had he played both of them after his attacks, well, he would have had four more attacks available, which would have been enough to go for game. Let's go through this step by step, shall we? Zane has just attacked with all three of his Cyberdark monsters. He's got Cyrus's life points down to 1600. All Cyrus has on the field is life force. So this is what Zane should have done. Activate his quick play spell, Instant Fusion. Fuse and make Cyberdark Dragon. Attack directly, deal 400 damage. Activate Defusion. Make Horn, Keel and Edge. Attack, 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 deal 1200 damage. 400 plus 1200 is 1600. 1600 is exactly how many life points Cyrus had left, which means it would have been game. The only defense Cyrus could have had was that if on the previous turn, he had set his emergency provisions face down. This wouldn't be such a big deal, but the fact that Zane could have won two turns earlier and the play he's gonna do is so risky and requires such luck. It's just, oh, it's, he should have just done it now. So it's a misplay for Zane there. You could have won this turn and you would have guaranteed yourself to the win. Whereas what you're about to do, it's just kind of lucky you got the cards you did really, but let's see how this goes. It's Cyrus's turn and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws and gets Power Bond. The standby phase occurs and Cycroid and Training Wheels return back to the field. Cyrus activates his Power Bond. He fuses the Cycroid on his field with the Cycroid in his hand to make the fusion monster pair Cycroid. Due to Cycroid being removed from the field, Training Wheels goes to the grave. Thanks to Power Bond, the attack of the machine monster it summons is doubled. And so, Cyrus enters his battle phase and activates the effect of Cycroid, which, by reducing its attack by 500, allows it to attack directly. However, it is here where Zane activates his Power Wall. Now with this card, he can send cards from the top of his deck to reduce the damage he would take by 100 for each card he sends. How many cards is Zane gonna send? He can send any number, remember? All of them. Completely able to send maybe just a dozen or so to keep himself in the duel, decides to go full send and send 27 cards from the top of his deck to the grave to reduce the damage to zero. Thanks to this play, Zane doesn't take any damage at all, but it also means he's only got one card left in his deck. Meaning, if he can't end the duel on his next turn, it's done, it's over, he loses to deck out. Cyrus, unable to finish the duel there, moves into his main phase two and sets his emergency provisions face down. As he ends his turn, the effect of Power Bond kicks in. You see, there is always a price to pay when you use Power Bond. Double attack, that's great. But during the end phase, you take damage equal to the original attack of the fusion monster you summoned. And so, since Pair Cycroid had 1,600 original attack, Cyrus is about to take that much as damage, which with only 1,600 life points left, will result in his own defeat. However, this is where Cyrus reveals his final play. He knew Zane would be able to survive his attack, and so he had mirror damage ready. Now I want you to listen to how unnecessarily hyper-specific this card is, because it's just kind of silly. Equip this card to a monster you control. If you would take damage equal to the equipped monster's original attack by the effect of a spell card, switch the effect damage to your opponent. When this card is removed from the field, destroy the equipped monster. Honestly, I feel like Barrel Behind the Door would have just been a much easier and more generic card to use, but 
What do I know, right? I mean, it wouldn't have mattered either way because before Zayn can even take the 1600 damage, he activates his counter trap, Fusion Guard which negates the activation and effect of a card that would inflict damage at the cost of sending one random card from his extra deck to the grave. Zayn randomly sends his Cyber End Dragon from his extra deck to the grave to prevent him from taking any damage. It's Zayn's turn, and the final turn of the duel. He draws his final card, Warp Beam. Luckily, this is the perfect card to draw to win him the duel. But you see now by activating it, he can select any number of face-up monsters he controls and then send an equal number of cards he controls to the grave to make the attack of the selected monsters become 600. Those monsters now, however, can attack directly. With this, Zane targets his keel and horn and sends the equipped cards to them, Infernal Dragon and Exploder Dragon. Now both of these monsters can attack directly. Zane enters his battle phase and uses both of them to attack Cyrus directly. Cyrus uses Life Force to reduce the damage. Zane then uses Cyber Dark Edge's own effect to attack directly by halving its damage. Cyrus again uses Life Force to reduce the damage. With only 400 life points left, Zane activates his Rebirth Judgment. This card turns all monsters in the graves into a declared type. Zane chooses Dragon. I'll be honest, he didn't need Rebirth Judgment. He actually has everything in place already to win, but it's a little bit of overkill. What he does with this is he activates his quick play spell, Instant Fusion. This allows him to fuse his Cyber Dark Horn, Keel, and Edge during the battle phase to make his Cyber Dark Dragon. Now, since Cyber Dark Dragon was special summoned, it equips itself with any dragon in either graveyard. Since Cyber End Dragon is now in the grave and a dragon type, he equips it to itself. But not only that, it also gains 100 extra attack for each card in Zane's grave. Zane attacks Pair Psychroid, attempting to go for game. However, Cyrus makes his final play. He activates Emergency Provisions. He sends one spell or trap he controls to the graveyard in order to increase his life points by 1000 for each. He sends Mirror Damage, which is equipped to his Pair Psychroid. Unfortunately, since Mirror Damage was removed from the field, its effect destroys Pair Psychroid. A replay occurs and Zane again attacks with Cyberdark Dragon, this time directly. Luckily, that 8,800 damage is reduced all the way down to 400 thanks to Life Force. And with that, it seems as if Cyrus has won. Zane ends his turn here with no more plays. Go to Cyrus, Cyrus ends his turn, Zane loses the deck out. But Zane has one final play. Zane activates the fusion. He returns Cyberdark Dragon back into his extra deck in order to summon all of its materials to the field. With Horn, Keel, and Edge all on the field, he uses all three to attack Cyrus directly. With only 1,000 life points left, even with the help of Life Force, it's not enough to keep himself in the duel. Zane wins. Simply put, apart from the moments I pointed out throughout this duel where Zane could have won a little bit earlier, it's a pretty open and shut case. There was absolutely no avenues for success that I noticed where Cyrus could have won. I just couldn't see it in this duel. But like I said earlier, I think the best thing that Cyrus added to his deck was Life Force. That card is actually really nuts and I can see why they haven't made it in real life. It's pretty strong. In terms of Zane, the only misplay he really made was sending way too many cards to the graveyard with Power Wall but it still worked out in the end, but it was an unnecessary risk, but that was kind of it. Want to see Jaden duel Zane next? Well, I have a video for that. Or perhaps you'd like to learn more about the Cyber Dart Monsters. Well, I have a video for that. Check them out if you want to. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Catch you later.